my guest today is a familiar face and voice when it comes to West Indies cricket. He's a uh, radio commentator, television commentator, and a fantastic journalist as well. And he'll be a very happy man today. The one and only Fazir Mohammed. Fazir, a w- very warm welcome to you. Good to be on the show once again, Saj. You're smiling. I wonder why. Well, as, as I was telling you before we, we came on air today, if my dad had been alive, he would have been 85 years old today. Sadly, he passed away some 14 years ago. But if he were around and if, it, if his spirit, wherever, his soul, wherever it might be, is aware of what's going on in, in on, on planet Earth, he would be rejoicing in this West Indies Test match victory over Australia. I mean, it must be a huge boost for everybody involved in West Indies cricket, uh, Fazir, to go to Australia and to beat them in a Test match in their own backyard. Well, you know, Saj, because it would have happened overnight, our time here in the Caribbean, and because at the time of our recording, it's just around 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, there are many people, thousands, I am sure, not just in my home island of Trinidad, who are waking up to the news and wondering if they are still asleep. Because no one, I mean, if, if you look at it in the most balanced, even in the most fanatical West Indian perspective possible, no one that I know of seriously gave the West Indies a chance of even being competitive against Australia, far less winning a Test match. I mean, it's been so long since uh, West Indies won a Test match in, in Australia, 1997, I believe. And, and that's probably one of the reasons uh, why the, the belief just probably wasn't there. That would be one of the reasons. Yes, uh, February of 1997 was the last Test of a five-match series. Those were the days when the West Indies were still well regarded to the extent that they had five Test match series uh, down in Australia. Uh, but not just uh, the fact that it was so long ago, but also, and I think more importantly, for the fact that the West Indies have been so poor in Test match cricket over that period, and especially in Australia. The West Indies would usually go to Australia, lose every Test match, more, most of them inside three or four days, and the only ones they wouldn't lose would be ruined by rain. So to have a situation like this, Saj, and not just for a West Indies team to win, but has been well reported leading up to the two Test matches, seven uncapped players in the squad, four debutants across the three matches, and to have the hero being one of those uncapped players taking seven wickets in that critical innings it, 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 it's really fairy tale stuff. That's why many people will ask themselves, you know, am I really dreaming this? Tell us about some of these players that have performed so well in this uh, test match, uh, Fazir, because a lot of, you know, cricket lovers around the world, with all due respect, will not know much about these guys like Shamar Joseph. No, in, in, no offence taken at all. If people say, well, you know, Shamar who before this, this test series, or uh, Kavem Hodge who? or Alec Atanas, and, and so many of these young players, because, again, they, they're really uh, unknowns, even to many in the Caribbean. Uh, they would have played domestic cricket. Many would have been on West Indies A teams. Many would have been around for quite some time. Kavem Hodge, uh, who scored an excellent half century in the, the first innings. Uh, he's 30 years of age. He's been around for quite some time. Uh, Justin Graves, uh, the decent middle-order batsman and, and seam bowler who's seen as a, a potential replacement for Jason Holder. He's 29 years of age. So you're talking about, in many cases, guys who have been in and around West Indies domestic cricket without really doing anything spectacular. Yet here you have that same team. And again, you look at their numbers and they really should not have done this because even in the batting, uh, the batting averages from the two test matches are very ordinary. But it's the bowling, the bowling that made the West Indies competitive. Shamar Joseph was the, the leading light uh, with the five wicket hole in the first innings in Adelaide, the seven wicket hole, the winning hole in this test match here in Brisbane. Uh, but I think what we are seeing is a, a young team disregarded, dismissed, uh, almost insulted in the way they've been referred to in Australia. And I think that's why Craig Brathwaite reference the comments of the former Australian fast bowler Rodney Hogg, who was really scathing in, in his references to the team. And I recall uh, the, uh, the, the English uh, commentator, uh, former player Mark Nicholas, talking about the West Indies being uh, short on brains ahead of the 2016 T20 World Cup. 
And we saw what happened there. It was a motivation for Darren Samley's team uh, to pull off uh, that dramatic triumph over England. So, so yes, uh, you're, you're talking about a squad who many people right here in the Caribbean will now be getting familiar with. And what about the future, Fazir? You know, there's been so many false dawns in, in West Indies cricket where you think they've turned the corner and it's like one step forward and two steps back at times. Is this, you know, the, the a, a, a fresh start for West Indies cricket? I should mention to you, Sarge, that if you say turn the corner in the West Indies in reference to West Indies cricket, you'll be immediately ostracised because we've been saying that for almost 30 years. Uh, and you can reference many moments, a famous victory over England at Headingley in 2017 when Shea Hope got twin hundreds and Craig Brathwaite got 190 odd. We talk about 2016, the Triple Crown and the 19 World Cup, uh, T20 World Cup for both the men and the women. And, and many people would have looked at those moments and said, okay, finally, the, the era of suffering and anguish would be over. And it didn't, didn't happen. And, and therefore, many will be very guarded. Of course, there'll be the enthusiasts who will be saying, this is the new dawn, this is the new beginning. Uh, Shamal Joseph is going to dominate the world and lead us to, to new glories. But there'll be a level of caution for a couple of reasons. One, the West Indies still have a serious problem with the quality of their batting. Two, uh, you've got a situation where if it hasn't happened already, Shamar Joseph and maybe a couple others will already be getting offers for T20 franchise contracts, which will pull them away from West Indies duty and will pay them much more than they could earn playing for the West Indies. And thirdly, and this comes to the structure of international cricket, the West Indies don't play much test match cricket anyway. So when you think about it, 1-1, a victory like this, it is perfectly set up for a deciding test match, but there's no such thing. There are only two tests. The West Indies stopped playing five test series way back in 2002 because we basically weren't considered of good market value. So how do players like Shamar Joseph, how do Kavim Hodge, how do Alec Athanes, how do these young players get the chance to develop their game in test match cricket when their next series, three matches against England, is basically six months away? Seems to be a common problem, Fazir. You know, in Pakistan, we're seeing the same situation where we had a case of Harris Ralph and the the um, people that run Pakistan cricket wanted him to join up with the Test squad, and he's basically turned around and said, "Well, no, sorry, I'm in Australia, but I'll I'll play in the Big Bash League instead." And you can't argue with players doing that because a, a sportsman and a sportswoman's life, active life, is very short, and you can't begrudge these players prioritizing their financial well-being, their, their taking care of their families to secure their financial futures. And that's why, Serge, and, and, and I know when I when I used to contribute a column to the website, many people would say I'm seeing the same thing over and over again because I think it's relevant that the authorities, the ICC, which is really a glorified umbrella in which the powers of the game, who at this time happen to be India, Australia, and England, sit around and determine the structure of the game. You can't possibly have what a reputable international competition where there are three nations who play far more test cricket than everyone else. For example, right now, we have England and Australia, England and sorry, India in the final stages of one test match of five. Yet Pakistan have just played only three against Australia. West Indies have just completed just two against Australia. So where's the balance? Where is the equity that allows other test playing nations to develop their players and be equally as competitive over the long term. Coming back to guys like Shamar Joseph and etc. Uh, Fazir, this win, I mean, how big is it for the future of West Indies cricket as well? Because a lot of the youngsters will be looking at footballers in the Caribbean and you know looking across uh, to USA at uh, NBA etc. And these guys who won a test match in Australia. You know, they could be future heroes for, for some of these youngsters. They, they can be, and I'm sure they will be, uh, but the, the, the passion may not be there as it used to be. Uh, because again, when you, you have a situation where the West Indies teams spend more time losing than winning over decades, th that, that culture of losing drives fans away. But again, it really depends on the authorities. 
creating that that link, that relationship with these players and the fans once again, because there's been a level of disconnect uh, over the years. And again, that point about players being lost to franchise cricket. Cricket West Indies is, is, is economically tiny, almost almost negligible. They don't have the resources to compete with an IPL or BBL or PSL or, or, or many of the other franchises that are springing up all over the world. So therefore, when you would be looking to a Shamar Joseph and others from humble backgrounds, I mean, the, the backstory to Shamar Joseph from a tiny village in Guyana, in the hinterland, where you can only access it by boat, and, and from what he's been able to achieve in a couple of years, it's inspirational. But because, and again, you can't begrudge players being lost to, to the franchise format if that offer comes, where is the, the counter? What can Cricket West Indies do to keep these players in the, in the West Indies setup to keep them not just performing for the West Indies every time, but inspiring the young boys and girls who would like to represent the West Indies? And finally, Fazir, from a Pakistani perspective, uh, Pakistan have uh, played 17 test matches in Australia, lost 17. So I think West Indies' win today will hopefully be... Uh, an incentive for Pakistan to perform next time they're in Australia because too often teams like West Indies and Pakistan, you mentioned about Rodney Hawk, we've had Ian Chappell and others, make uh, almost derogatory comments about uh, these teams touring Australia. Absolutely. And I, and I think the West Indies took inspiration from Pakistan in those three test matches uh, because there's a very strong affinity between these two teams for the way they play the game, the passion, the excitement, the unpredictability, the, the talent that emerges from almost nowhere. But Pakistan, if one, obviously, if they'd held their catches and if they'd taken the opportunities along the way, could have been very competitive. It, it would not have been 3 nil without question. So I think the West Indies took inspiration from that, apart from what they would have taken from within themselves and their own determination to prove the detractors wrong. So, so yes, this is a message to world cricket, which won't listen because the, 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 the big powers of world cricket like the structure the way it is. They won't listen. So it's really up to the so-called smaller nations like ourselves to stand up and say, you either listen to us or we're going to have to do something really drastic to change the structure of the international game. Azir, thank you very much for your time. Always a pleasure listening to your views. And uh, let's hope this is a uh, a new dawn in Caribbean cricket. Let's certainly hope so, but just don't say till the corner anymore. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Thanks very much, Fazir. Take care.